James chapter 1, here it is. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith work is patience. And so how do you keep on keeping on? Number one, if you look at verse one, you'll see that he is writing to those that are scattered abroad. Number one, know that there are others out there. Know that there are others out there. Sister Richard Moore, sometimes the issues that we have in life get us down because we are tricked by the enemy to believe that we are all alone in our situation. But if there are some folk who are willing to be honest, we can recognize that all of us have situations. All of us have gone through situations. All of us have some situations. And if we live long enough, we will have another situation. You, you know, it's a sad thing when you go to the church, and oftentimes this is what happens when you go to the church, you find people who feel like they have arrived, they've made it, and God has blessed them and only them. But, but I've got news for you. If you were honest enough with yourself and stopped telling those lies, you would recognize that you have been through something. You've gone through some issues and there are some things that you would like to sweep under the carpet. There are some things that you wish nobody else knew. But in fact, there are some issues in your life. There are some issues that you've had. There are some issues that you still have. And there are some issues to come. Now some folks say that if I had any faults, I would tell somebody. But let me tell you, even in the fact that you think you don't have any, it says that that's your biggest fault of all. All of us have some issues, and there's no need for us to look around and think that we finally got it going on so that we might be able to look down our nose at somebody else. Let, let me remind you that you're only about a paycheck and maybe a half when you think you really got it going on from being on the street yourself. Uh, all you are is one doctor visit away from finding out that you're sick when you fall into that depression that somebody else is in. You're only one week away. The preacher talked this morning about that week. You, only, I know you think you're strong, but you're only one week away from having an affair. You're really not that strong. You, you think you got it going on, but the fact is, had not God watched after you, the fact is, had not the Holy Spirit come to direct you and control you, if we are left by ourselves and on our own, we will go crazy, be crazy, act crazy, and stay crazy. And so we ought to thank God that he has blessed us with so many examples of both destruction and degradation, but at the same time, he has told us we can get up from that place. And so I don't come to church to act like and to be like and to have my nose up in the air as if I am perfect today. I come to church in order to worship God, in order to study his scripture, but then I come to church in order for me to get in the hut. And as I get in the huddle and I listen to other folk talk about their stories and talk about how things have gone on in their life, it gives me strength for the journey because they can tell me, I've been through something. Keep on keeping on. All of us have some stories to encourage each other with. All of us have some things that have happened in our life. Don't worry about it. Just keep on keeping on. If the church could be honest, what a better church we could be. If, if God's people could be honest, what a better people we would be. Some years ago, churches stopped doing the testimony period. And one of the reasons that a lot of folks stopped doing the testimony period is because people would get up and abuse the time. They didn't get up to talk about how good God had been. Oftentimes, they get up to talk about how bad somebody else was. You know, oftentimes we take our focus off of God because we're so busy putting our focus on somebody else. 
When in fact, if we could stop long enough to focus on God, we would then recognize that we don't have time enough to check out somebody else because there's so much junk going on in us. I, I am so glad that the Lord has blessed me to the point where I understand that I'm not the only one. You know, uh, there was a song, I forgot, I think it was Pat Benatar, but uh, some years ago there was a song, and, and she wrote this song, it was kind of like a love song where she had been jilted, and she said in the song, she said, you're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. And you know, that's the, that's the whole issue, is that oftentimes we think that it is all about me, when God has made it all about us. Because even when there is a scattering, even when it seems that you're all alone, believe me, you're not the only one. Not only should you recognize that there are others out there. In verse 2, he says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. You need to embrace joy. He's saying here that you're going to have some traps in life. That there are going to be some stuff thrown at you in life. There are going to be some things that people are going to do to you in life. But you know what? You can just count it joy. You can count it all up in joy. Oftentimes, what we don't realize is that we mess ourselves up and we stress ourselves out because we are busy looking at it the wrong way. See, you have the choice to look at it in the negative or in the positive. It is your choice to be able to allow the Lord to pull you to a place where you can look over it or you can get down and you can allow the enemy to take you so low till you'll always be looking under the situation. And so we can count this joy in terms of how you look at it. I told somebody the other day, I was thinking about it, I think it was the Curry's I was talking to, and uh, I was telling them, say, you know what, I know that it's a shame that uh, society has gotten to its place and all of us we sit around sometimes and talk about oh society has gotten so bad and, and Brother White will say that the kids have gotten so, so horrible and, and they don't learn like they should and they're not going to college like they should and, and they do this and they do that I said you know what I wish I, I really do wish that everybody's kids could be successful I really do but from the, from the, from the perspective of a person who raises their children right you ain't got nothing to grave in because if everybody else's kids are falling in the cracks, then that means there's no competition for yours. Sometimes it's all in the way that you look at it. When everybody else uh, said that, uh, you know, land value and the property value was going down, Liberty Hill said, well, it's time to buy. Sometimes we look at it and we think that the world is falling apart, but sometimes it's to your, 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 your advantage. If it's depression, if they say it's a depression, and in the period of depression, my grandparents say, well, you know, soup, you can buy a bowl of soup for three cents. Well, if you got a dollar, look how many bowls of soup you could buy. And so sometimes it's the way that we look at it. We say, you know, everything is falling apart. You know what? Everything around you might be falling apart, but you ought to count it joy because as God gives you wisdom, then you find out how to use the lack to your advantage. Because the Bible tells us that when you really love the Lord, everything works to your good. So it doesn't make any difference what else is going on. It's to your good. And so you can count it joy when everybody else comes and oh, it's all falling apart. You can say, well, you know what? The Lord's still blessing us. Because I know he will, I know he can. I can embrace joy. It is my choice to allow the Holy Spirit to bring joy in my life. Do you know that it does not make any difference what the situation is? We have to choose how we're going to feel about it. We have to choose whether or not we're going to allow it to bring us down or whether or not we can step upon it and move up. A lot of our health and a lot of our stress is because we cannot embrace joy. Now some of it is a systemic issue that comes from our family relationships. Because we were raised in 
environments that were con constantly and perpetually negative. And so you've heard of drama queen and addicted to drama. Some of us are addicted to drama because that's all we know. All we know is to be stressed all the time because we grew up in families where they were always stressed and hypertension.